This is Minecraft. And this is also Minecraft. And this is what we'll be making today. Hello young scratchers, welcome to another scratch tutorial. Today we'll be making Minecraft. Now obviously this won't be as good as the real Minecraft, but this is scratch, so let's get straight into it. First let's start by renaming the cat to blocks. Now this sprite is not actually a block, it's a cat, so let's replace it with our Minecraft block. Let's go into the costume editor and delete the second costume. I'll also delete the contents inside of the first costume, and let's upload our Minecraft block. You can find the link in the description. I'll press open, and now you'll see we have a block in the scratch editor. Now the size is specifically 32 pixels by 32. That will be useful later on. For now, let's just delete the first costume and rename this to grass. Next, we have to delve into world generation, so let's go back to the code. The size of Scratch's stage is 480 pixels by 360 pixels. So if we were to divide 480 by 32, which is the size of the Minecraft block, we could fit approximately 15 blocks on the screen. Now how about height? 360 is currently the height of our stage, so let's divide that by 32 and we get 11.25. We actually can't have a quarter of the block on the screen, so we'll have to round that down to 10. Finally, let's get to placing blocks on the screen. Let's click on the extensions tab and click on pen. The block we'll be using is called stamp, which will place another copy of the block on the screen, but we can't move it. This other block called erase will erase the clone off of the screen. We can use these two blocks to create blocks on the screen. Alright, let's go to control and drag out repeat 10. I'll change it to 15, then let's go to motion and drag out change x by 10. I'll change this to 32 which is the width of the block. Then let's put stamp before it and when we press it, you'll see we create a line of grass. If we were to try to press it again, we wouldn't see anything. Let's clear the screen before and then when we press it, you'll see that nothing appears except this grass block. We have to reset the position when we're done. I'll set it to minus 225 on the x-axis and minus 165 on the y. Now the whole bottom of the screen will be grass blocks. Great! We have successfully made Minecrafts. Well, not yet. The next thing we'll need to do is start by filling up the vertical space of the screen with more grass blocks. Let's drag out another repeat 10 and this time we'll put it over the repeat 15. Then we'll put a change y by 32 the height of the block outside of repeat 15. We'll also reset the y to minus 225 outside of the loop. What's happening here is that we're creating a row of blocks on the bottom. We change y by 32 which moves the blocks up and then we create another row of blocks. We repeat this 10 times which we will reach the top. And you'll see we have this little grass block here. We can easily fix this by first showing the block before we stamp it and then hiding it after. Now the annoying flickering at the edge of the screen will go away. So that's our first step. We have successfully filled up the screen with grass blocks. Next, let's get into making hills and mountains. Currently, we're filling up the screen by starting at the left side and moving to the right and creating a whole new row. To create variations on the vertical axis of the block, let's switch the rows. Instead of change x by 32 inside of the loop, let's put it outside and put the change y by 32 inside of repeat 15. Then set x to minus 225 will be replaced by set y to minus 165. This way we start at the bottom left and we move up, then we move on to the next row and then we create another block moving up. You can see this happening on the screen. And it just stops short there and that's because I need to set this to repeat 15 and then repeat 10. So now what? Now, we have to choose a random value to move up, and then once we get to that random value, we move on to the next row. This way, each block will have their own heights. Let's quickly find the operators tab, and the block we're looking for is pick random 1 to 10. I'll snap this in, repeat 10, 
and I'll change this to pick random 5 to 10. Let's run this block and you'll see each row has its own vertical value. That's because we replace 10 with pick random 5 to 10, which will pick a random value from 5 to 10. Simple, am I right? To fix the drawing effect where a mountain will just appear out of nowhere, let's first delete the my variable variable, and this variable will determine how far the mountains will be spaced apart. I'll call this world frequency. Also, make sure for all sprites is checked. Then let's press OK and make a new variable, and I'll call this world amplitude. This will determine how high the mountains go. Let's set world amplitude, and I'll set this to a default value of 5, and also I'll set world frequency to 3. I also forgot to make a new variable called sine, and make sure it's for this sprite only. Let's press OK. Now, after we change y by 32, let's also change sine by 1. And then, instead of pick random 5 to 10, let's set this to sine of sine. I'm going to go to the operators tab, and then I'm going to drag out a multiply block. Here is where we can define our world frequency. We multiply sine by world frequency, and then after that, we encase the whole thing in a multiply block again, and this time, we'll multiply it by world amplitude. In a sine wave, frequency will determine how close the waves are together, and amplitude will determine how high the waves go. Let's also make a new variable called world offset y, which will determine how far the ground goes up. I'll add this on to all of that mess right there, and at the end, let's just put world offset y. I know it looks like a mess, but I just I think I explained it well. Okay, let's attach this to repeat 10, that's a monstrosity, and also let's set a world offset y to 5. Let's click that code to run it, and then let's run the second code. And now you'll see we have an awesome sine wave effect on our ground. I'll move these variables to the bottom, just so you can see the effect. Alright, we have the basics down for our Minecraft world generation. Let's go and click on the my blocks category and click on create a block. I think I'll call this uh, create world. And let's also press run without screen refresh just so the con <coughs> code run really fast. Okay, let's drag all the code we've created and put it under create world. And now let's drag out when green flag clicked, set all the variables to the default values, and then let's click on my blocks and create world. And so I'm pressing green flag and nothing is happening. Sign right now is 82. I forgot to set sign to zero when we created the world. So let's press the green flag and yes, that works now. Let's go to operators and drag out pick random one to 10. I'll put this in change sign by, and now we should have a random world each time we press create world. And the reason that the whole screen is not filling is because we need to mess with the world frequency and world amplitude values. So I'll just change this and now it's working. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. All you have to do is find a good combination of numbers you like. You can have a world that's really mountainy and a world that's kind of flat. And if you change the world offset Y, that will change how high the ground is from the bottom of the screen. So just keep that as something low so you have more space to build. So my final values for the frequency, I had one. For the amplitude, I had three. And for the world offset Y, I had five. Also, make sure to hide the variables that we created just so you can see more of the world. And before we end the tutorial, let's end it by creating a sky background. So I'll just do a, choose a blue color for the sky and make sure to press convert to bitmap so you can fill in the backgrounds. And that's it. Thanks for watching this tutorial and I'll see you in the next one. Make sure to subscribe and like the video for more.